I'm Chimomo Mangazi with Business Time on Times. It is a magazine program where we bring you business and economic news stories making headlines. In the program today, National Food Reserve Agency to release 25,000 metric tons of maize for price stabilization function. Also in the program, the Hirevai Transformation Project, second phase, faces a $91 million deficit. We have these and other stories. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome. The National Food Reserve Agency has indicated that plans are underway to release 25,000 metric tons of maize for price stabilization function. NFRA board chairperson Dennis Kalekeni told Business Time the maize will be supplied in areas where prices of the commodity have risen significantly. He begins by explaining the situation in maize stocks at the strategic grain reserves. Yeah, let, let me indicate uh, that uh, as National Food Reserve Agency right now, we have uh, adequate uh, um, maize reserves that is ready for dis distribution to needy people. And I must also indicate that uh, just last week, we had a government of uh, a meeting of stakeholders where Dotma has now been allowed to draw around 31,000 metric tons for distribution to areas that uh, have food shortages and to families that need support. But other than that, it is also important to indicate that uh, uh, government is aware that uh, this uh, season, the season that, that had just ended as a country, we did not have uh, the much needed the, uh, maize harvest due to natural calamities. And what government has done right now is to put in place mechanisms to ensure that we also procure 100,000 metric tons of maize right now from ADMAC. This is the maize that ADMAC bought using money that it borrowed from banks, and banks were holding that maize as a corral. And so we are bailing out ADMAC in that particular case because now they will, have, uh, they will pay their date to the banks. But at the same time, government is also ensuring that there is food sufficiency in the country by uh, actually replenishing uh, the grain reserves with an extra 100,000 metric tons of maize, despite the fact that right now we are already distributing to needy people. Uh, currently we can be uh, talking of around 24, 25,000 metric tons uh, and uh, that is quite adequate uh, for distribution because the, the distribution, mind you, is not done within a day. It is spread all over. So I want to believe that Dotma would be able to draw that maze maybe in a space of two to three months, and by that time, uh, uh, government shall also have already replenished um, um, our stocks using the maze that we are buying from Admark. A greater part of this maze is already with us as NFRA. We are keeping on behalf of Admark. Part of it, of course, is with ADMAC in their depots. So what to be done here? Because the, the process of procurement is almost over. The contract agreements have already been signed. So right now, I can competently say that the maize is already, is already purchased. So what will happen is that we just have to collect the remaining maize that ADMAC is keeping. But a greater part of that maize is already in our silos because we were keeping uh, for ADMAC. So we just transfer on paper from the maize being belonging to ANMAC and now belonging to NFRA. The government has indicated that the second phase of the Shire Valley Transformation Program is facing a financing shortfall of about $91 million owing to project variations and the recent devaluation of the Kwaja. This came out over the weekend when the Budget and Finance Committee of Parliament toward the project to appreciate how the initial financing approved by the August House was being used more in this report. Principal Secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture responsible for irrigation, Geoffrey Mamba, says the first phase has not faced any funding challenges. 
He, however, indicated that the World Bank has already provided $134 million for phase two, but there is a shortfall of $91 million. And now um, you know that we get financing from the World Bank and we get financing from the African Government Bank, from the Global Environmental Facility, and most importantly from the Malawi government. So together, they have put up resources to enable us, the Minister of Agriculture, to implement this flagship program that we feel will result in reduction of imports and the increase in terms of exports, uh, in terms of agricultural products. Yeah, in total it's about 234 million for phase one. But in, those, in this phase, phase one, we have uh, the World Bank contributing 160 million US dollars. We have the African Development Bank contributing uh, 50 million US dollars. But African Development Bank is working together with the, the Nigerian Trust Fund and is also working together with OPEC. Besides that, we have the Malawi government that is contributing about 7.3 million US dollars, but this money is used mainly for compensation, not infrastructure. But uh, we also have uh, the Global Environmental Facility. You know, when you want to have to harness water resources, you also have to be mindful about the condition of the catchment. So we have resources that have come from the Global Environmental Facility amounting to 5.9 million US dollars to ensure that uh, the catchment that will bring us water is well conserved. All the uh, mountains, the Matandwe Forest, the Majete Game Reserve, and so on and so forth, they are going to get financing to be used for the protection of the environment. Is there a deficit? For phase one, there is no deficit. But we expect the deficit to be in as we go into phase two. But you may also have uh, uh, already heard that uh, the World Bank uh, has already given us uh, 134 million US dollars for phase two. But we have a shortfall of 91 million US dollars. And uh, the, we have been in engagement with the Africa Development Bank. Uh, we have uh, held an appraisal mission and they're assuring us that they will, cont they will come back with resources uh, close to 50 million US dollars. And this, when these resources come, they'll have to go through the parliament and get uh, uh, either approved or disapproved. But we believe it will be approved. And this is why we are so happy today that uh, we have uh, the committee that is responsible for budget and finance from uh, the parliament, which has come to appreciate the works that are being done. You know, this committee is very important. It has an oversight role in terms of uh, what is being done by the executive part of the government. They, in parliament, they pass loans as, as, uh, as, as acts, but uh, this money comes to ministries, and they have to ensure that uh, when uh, the ministers are implementing the projects, they come and see what is being done. And we are happy that they came, and we are happy that as we present, as government presents the, the bill, especially for the African Development Bank, which is, will be coming, uh, we believe that it will be passed without problems because of their appreciation of the works that are being done under the Shirevara Transformation Program. Chairperson of the Budget and Finance Committee, Gladys Ganda, disputed the reasoning behind the deficit, saying devaluation should not affect the project as the funding has been quoted in dollars. We've noted that they are increasing uh, prices that are already in, in dollars, and uh, the explanation has been that it's because of devaluation and also probably uh, project variations. So as a committee, we are not really um, impressed with the explanation that they are increasing the project because of the devaluation. The project is already in dollars. In, in, in actual fact, they are supposed to benefit from the, the, from the devaluation and not to lose for, because of devaluation. If the project is, is in dollars, what, what that means is when they were given $1 million, for example, Last time it was one, point, uh, one, one, one billion kwacha. At this time around, same one million dollars, one million dollars is, it will be 1.5 billion kwacha. Therefore, to say that uh, they are going to increase the project because of the devaluation, we think that it's, it's an unstarter. And uh, probably we should just talk about the project variations and not devaluations. Objectives of the second phase include increasing agricultural productivity in targeted smallholder-owned commercial farm enterprises, support value chain, and value addition, among others. Malawi Revenue Authority, MRA, has emphasized the need for tax education among Malawians for them to appreciate the need to pay tax. This, MRA says, would significantly boost tax revenues in the country. 
This came out over the weekend during the commemoration of World Customs Day in Blanta. Justin Fuel reports. Education is key to success, they say. But not does it only bring success, but it also enlightens and help people to improve their lives. Probably that's the philosophy that drove Malawi Revenue Authority, which has emphasized the need for tax education among Malawians for them to appreciate the need to pay tax. This MRA says would significantly boost tax revenues in the country. This came out over the weekend during a World Customs Day commemorations in Blanta. MRA Commissioner General John Biswick said tax evasion persists due to, among other things, ignorance and some people who find loopholes in the system. The secret is that we are engaging the taxpayers more because and it's actually it's part of the theme of the, uh, the day we are celebrating. You know, we try to engage the taxpayers so that they understand their obligations. But in addition, uh, what we have benefited from is uh, the good performance of some sectors in the economy. You know, in an economy like ours, not all sectors are doing badly, others are doing well. So those that are doing well have managed to push us through. The prospects, prospects for the next quarter are also good. Uh, let's see how this month ends, uh, because this is a, what we call a provisional tax month. That's when actually uh, the targets are quite high. Now, if we can do well in this quarter, it means I can assure you that by the end of uh, this year we'll do, we'll do well as well. Uh, considering that February is a short month, so we did really depend on January to push us through uh, to the end of uh, March. MRA board chairperson Vizenge Gumwenda said even though the authority meets and surpasses targets, the revenue would have been more if it were not for tax evaders. Yeah, you know, it is very important because you see, uh, starting with MRA itself, within MRA, you have different departments, uh, people, uh, staff working in different sections. And for MRA to do its job properly, the different departments have to work together as one unit. And for them to work together as, unit, as one unit, at the, core, at the center of it is that they should communicate. And communication involves uh, information sharing, knowledge sharing. But if we move... Uh, uh, if we look outside of MRA, for MRA itself to do its job, it has to interact and interface with different stakeholders, uh, domestically as well as internationally. Uh, at the domestic level, it works with clearing agents, it works with banks, it works with uh, ICT companies, it works with immigration, it works with the police. The list is a long one. And again, there. MRA needs to collaborate, and collaboration involves, uh, uh, effective collaboration requires information sharing and knowledge sharing. And uh, also, like as I've said internationally, MRA has to work with its, its counterpart organizations, for instance, in the neighboring countries. So in our case, MRA interacts with, uh, what I may say, the MRA of Tanzania, uh, Zambia, uh, and Mozambique. Uh, information moving both ways, knowledge moving both ways, and that's very important. So that's why I was, I was uh, emphasizing to MRA that they should continue the culture of knowledge and information sharing. In an interview, tax expert from EK Consultants, Emmanuel Kaluluma, said there is a need to deal with the root cause and not the symptoms. He said when people start businesses, they want to maximize profit and not give money to government, which has become complicated as the country admits that it has been overtaken by a corrupt way of life. Apart from the commemorations, MRA awarded stakeholders it works with in knowledge sharing and revenue collection. One of the awardees is Malawi University of Business and Applied Sciences for its service in knowledge provision. MUBA's Executive Dean of School of Science and Technology, Professor Mpatso Kamdaya, said their role is to design programs that suit the country's revenue generation and protection. First of all is to say thank you for the recognition because we know that there are so many uh, uh, stakeholders who could have uh, been uh, chosen to uh, 
be awarded uh, this uh, certificate of recognition, but it has gone to us, uh, Malawi University of uh, Business and the Applied Sciences. So we just want to say thank you to management and the staff of MRI for the recognition. What is your law in uh, promoting the tax compliance culture? Right, I think two roles. The first one is about the uh, human capital development. So you know uh, MUBAS is uh, an institution where we train um, uh, people in the, uh, various portfolios. Uh, more particularly, we have got the, a degree program in the, uh, taxation and a master's uh, degree program where we deal with the issues of international trade. So our contribution is uh, actually towards human capital development for people working for MRA. The 2023 World Customs Day was commemorated under the theme Nurturing the Next Generation, promoting a culture of knowledge sharing and a professional pride in customs. Training and consultants FM Sikamo Konzat has emphasized the need for managers in corporate institutions to know the necessary leadership styles to employ in different situations. This, they say, would help managers to easily attain set goals and enhance institutional growth. This came out during a leadership seminar the firm hosted in the United Arab Emirates last week. More in this report. The training attracted participants from Malawi and Namibia and trainers from that country from a firm called VP Consultants. Sikamo founder and managing director Audrey Mwala says the training focused on modern leadership in a volatile, uncertain, complex and ambiguous world. It's about uh, equipping high positioned members of management with leadership skills. So the training itself is about uh, leadership and uh, management, but then for senior executives in organizations to just assist them with the aspects of how to lead in a volatile world that we are living in, what kind of skills one needs in an environment which is constantly changing. Well, uh, Sikamo is um, registered in Malawi, but then it's a company that has got eyes to operate outside the, Mal the country uh, as well as within the country. Actually, maybe this is the first time that you are aware of a training that Sikamo has done outside Malawi, but this is not the first time. Actually, last year, uh, we were also here in Dubai and we had a training on corporate governance. And uh, that was, I think, somewhere in March last year. And uh, in Dubai, this is uh, the second training that we are doing. But besides this, we've also done trainings outside the country. Uh, we've had one in um, last year as well. Uh, we had one in Zambia. Uh, this was on the debt management and uh, how to use debt for wealth creation. So it was also outside the country. And just for your information that Sikamo is not only in Malawi, it's actually registered in Zambia as well as in South Africa. Uh, it was more of the looking at the, the available, available opportunity, uh, not necessarily as a gap, but then the available opportunity that we noted that uh, in uh, UAE, it is a place where a lot of people like to come for training, but also they want to have the training in a different environment to have a different experience to also learn from the country itself especially because of the background of the country where the country we know that um, just 50 years ago it was a country which was not developed the way it is but through leadership through vision they were able to develop to become a country where we are now so um, that's the environment that we thought it would be better that when people are learning especially those in very high positions they are able to see for themselves what kind of development uh, people can do if they embrace the right leadership skills. The knowledge uh, which they have gained uh, that they can apply to their various leadership functions, where I think what is more important is 
the learning, but not only ending there, but also now putting that into action. Because we've gone into so much uh, within the one week that we have learned, we've been able to go through very important, deep-rooted secrets of for modern leadership. And our focus was not just on leadership as a, a traditional way, but we were focusing on modern leadership, uh, revolutionary leadership, and also looking at leadership in the world of VUCA. So when we are talking about VUCA, uh, it is actually an abbreviation where we are looking at uh, the world today. And the, the world today is a world where there is so much volatility. There's also uncertainty and it is also complex and there is ambiguity. So what our focus is, is to shape a leader on how they can deliver in that world of complexity, uncertainty, ambiguity, and the complexity, volatility. So on all that, how do you make a leader still remain strong and become a leader and navigate their way in the VUCA world? So we focused so much on equipping them with skills on how they themselves can be a better leader, but at the same time, how they can now make their team to become a, a better team. So. In Dubai here, we also have partners, uh, they are called VP Consultants, uh, that we've been uh, working together uh, in terms of helping the team in the, how they can motivate their teams to become better teams, as well as uh, problem-solving skills in this uh, VUCA world that we've been working together. So it's been an interesting uh, journey to also hear different experiences where we have lessons from Sikamo core team, but we also have lessons from our partners here in Dubai. One of the participants from Lirongo University of Agriculture and Natural Resources, Rwanda, Jini Ntentiwa, says the training was eye-opening and crucial considering the changing world. We have learned like the, the VUCA, which I think our, 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 our trainer has also talked about it. We are in a volatile world whereby if we don't go with the changing environment, then we find that we might not deliver we need to know that we are we are working in an environment that is volatile but also complex and uncertain so by doing that we've been given the skills on how we can lead or not get distracted with the environment that is there but to be able to lead even though the situation is volatile we also learned about the v-shape it's about the geese whereby we've been taught like as leaders there are times that we need to go down and give chance others to others so that they should be able to lead, not where we stick. And here we are given an example of the geese that move in a V-shape. And then when they want that the, the, the geese, the goose that is in the front feels like he, he can't lead anymore. He goes down to give chance to others to lead. So this is like kind of encouraging even those that are behind us to move forward so that we're able to lead and make an effective I mean, success to our organization. With that item, we've come to the end of today's edition of Business Time. It is a magazine program where we bring you major business and economic news stories making headlines in the country. On behalf of the entire production team, I am Chimome Mangazi. But always remember, if it doesn't make money, it doesn't make sense. Bye for now.